Hey everyone, Cotton Candy TA here, and welcome to Beginner's Course Part 10, Live Trade Part 1. All right, if you're enjoying the content so far and haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so. Uh, like the videos. If you want to donate and support what I do, you can find the details in the description of the videos. And if you haven't checked out the Twitter and TradingView account, uh, I would recommend you do so as I post up my trades there, uh, content release, and kind of what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, let's get right to it. All right, I want to take a few minutes to just discuss what's next with this channel as this is the wrapping up of the beginner's course. Uh, this will be the final lesson uh, in the beginner's course. So uh, what's next? Before we talk about that, uh, I wanna break down these three things, FA, TA, and MA. There's three types of analysis in our markets. There's fundamental analysis, and that's the study of companies uh, in crypto space. They're, they're the white papers, they're the company ethos. Uh, it's, it's basically the beliefs of the company and, and if you're an investor of that company the technical analysis now technical analysis only really got popularized in the 80s uh, before that uh, it was kind of laughed at like well uh, fundamental analysis is what we we trade and invest based on uh, and, and not up until the 80s was technical analysis actually used in the markets as uh, kind of the science and, and the why of trading call them technicians uh, common term, right? You chart, you're doing technical analysis, you're a technician. No, how good of a technician you are, uh, that's, that's your responsibility and your duty, right? And mental analysis. Mental analysis is the training of the discipline uh, of the mind, the, uh, the things that the, the psychology behind trading. It's the uh, things like bankroll management. It's the things like the um, ability to, to move past bad trades or, or see through good trades. It's, it's the uh, analysis of the psyche and the mental side of, of trading. Now, something I want to talk about about technical analysis briefly is technical analysis, because it's only been around since the 80s, it is still an evolving uh, form. It is still an evolving art. It is not something that we have seen the final form of yet. Uh, we probably won't see the final form for a long time and it is still right now being uh, explored and discovered and and the things from the past uh, you know they have like a 10 or 15 year lag period where the things that were once invented in the 80s uh, were used till the 90s and then the things that were used in the 90s were used to the 2000s and it's kind of this constant evolving uh, reformation and uh, recreation of technical analysis and it gets more and more advanced over time so something important to know is that you will never learn the final version of technical analysis. It is something that is always evolving. Yeah, it is something that will never stop, right? And, and with the breed of new markets like cryptocurrencies, we are seeing already uh, some, some re-evolutions of the, the technical analysis that we have out there right now. And uh, even, even in what I'll teach you guys in, in the advanced course, I am now starting to see uh, where technical analysis is going and what it's morphing into next, right? It's, it's a part of being a really good trader is, is being able to stay ahead of the curve and, and being able to uh, spot these things. Um, don't get too wrapped up in the evolution of technical analysis though, because it's something that takes years to develop. So uh, the takeaway from that is don't get stuck in one place uh, thinking that you know everything there is to always know. Uh, always educate yourself and, and do your due diligence to continuously grow as a trader but but don't don't go to the extreme other side too where you're starting to grasp at straws and create these theories that don't exist because you you won't you 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 you'll you'll get into the black hole right you'll get into the the mental analysis and the black hole of training that is trying to always chase something uh, it's the same thing i tell people about using indicators don't fall into the black hole of using indicators because you'll use one it'll fail you'll use another that one will fail and, and you get sucked into the black hole. Same thing can happen with a technical analysis. Don't overthink it. Practice what you know, uh, perfect what you're learning and, and move on. Okay, so what's next for the course after that little rant about the three different types of things? Uh, and the reason I ranted about that is because I will be breaking down uh, the technical analysis uh, in multiple courses, right? We have the beginner's course, we have the advanced course, and I'm considering to do a professional level course as well. So uh, something above advanced, which I haven't decided if I'm gonna do yet. But beyond that, I'm gonna be doing mental analysis. So I'm gonna have a whole entire course uh, as well outside of technical analysis on mental analysis. So uh, it's something to look forward to in the future. Uh, one of the pillars of trading is MA. And uh, yeah, I think it would be great value to people. And then looking at uh, possible live streams and morning uploads or morning uploads, one or the other, obviously not both, but uh, 
possibly opening up uh, a live stream uh, to kind of uh, log on every morning, uh, have a place where people can all come to and, uh, and, and see what's going on for the day and, and watch me trade and do what I do. Uh, you know, whether you guys want to follow in the same trades or, or do your own trades or you're just there to hang out, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, everybody's welcome. So I'm, I'm considering a couple different avenues of, of where this goes from here. Just because the support has been so great and uh, people love the course and, and it's helping a lot of you guys out there uh, for, from what we've learned so far, it's, it's helping you guys a ton and I'm getting amazing feedback and, and people are supporting me uh, in great ways. So uh, looking at maybe possibly doing either a live stream or morning uploads or maybe nothing. Maybe I just leave it at a course and, and, I, and I give you guys this material, uh, you know, gift to the people and, and I leave it at that and I, and I just, stop and, and and that becomes it there, there becomes nothing after that i'm not sure i'm not i haven't defined the future of this thing yet uh but these are the things i'm considering right now so if you if you have an opinion voice it tell me what you want to see from this channel as it grows um yeah all right wrapping up the beginner's course i want you guys to get one very specific takeaway from this thing and the takeaway is that what I'm teaching you here is going to evolve with the advanced course. What I've taught in the beginner's course is the groundwork to the constant refinement of these skills, okay? So I wanna go over something uh, regarding this course. Uh, I need you guys to know that the technical analysis that I teach in the beginner's course is not the final form of technical analysis. So what I mean by that is what I'm teaching right now is very specific to start training your eye uh, for the more advanced material. Everything evolves just like in lesson, uh, I believe it was nine, level adaptation. No, that would have been eight or nine. It doesn't matter it, whether it was lesson eight or lesson nine. That The, the whole uh, level adaptation lesson was all about taking what we knew and evolving it to the next step, right? It takes years and years and years to perfect this stuff. There is not one video I can show you guys that shows you the, the uh, total confines of that one lesson. So, so wedges, uh, levels, trends, patterns, these are all pieces that I've given you in the beginner's course that we will be building upon in the future courses, right? We'll be, we'll be taking what we know and we'll be evolving it and adapting it to a different set of uh, constraints. So know that what you're learning isn't the final form. It is important to understand that uh, baby steps have to be taken. You have to learn certain procedures and processes first uh, before you can see uh, the reasons why we do some of the things we do, right? So as we go on, we'll be refining everything that we, we know from this point on, and, uh, but, but not to the point where it makes it you know, unusable, uh, to the point where we're just elevating it to the next level, right? It was, it was the intent for, of this course from the beginning was to teach you the baby steps so that we can go into, this is why we learned it this way, so we can apply it in this way. Okay, so let's just get into a live trade. Uh, I think that wraps up uh, a little bit of everything, the oversight of the course, the uh, kind of the goodbye to the beginner's course part one, and uh, or the beginner's course live trade part one video. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So MDA has been a coin that I've been asked by a few people to chart just because it's had such uh, big price swings and MDA is uh, Moeda loyalty points for those of you who don't know. It's been a very popular coin lately. Uh, there's been a lot of price action on it and it has had some pretty big swings. So I, I've been asked to uh, chart this and I, you know, by, by uh, uh, an audience member, a student, and I said, sure, why not? I need a coin to chart anyway, so why don't I chart this one? So if I was setting up a live trade on Moeda, I think I'm saying that right, Moeda. Yeah, MDA, we'll just call it MDA by the ticker. What would I do? Okay, so, so this is how I'm starting every trade. I'm starting every trade by uh, looking at the, uh, let me just drag this window down a bit here. I'm starting every trade by looking at the monthly, right? And I'm gonna mark out my monthly levels and I'm using silver for my monthly levels, make sure my magnet tool is on. So the very first thing I wanna do is, uh, you know, look at the swing low of this move and uh, the high of that candle, right? So swing low the high of that candle, and then the swing high, right? And the swing low of that candle. So I've just defined some monthly levels and uh, you know, four, four simple lines, 
to start this chart to uh, understand the the kind of the highest level strength of level in, in this coin. Uh, and this is on Binance right now. We're on the one month on Binance. I'll try to keep this in the middle of the screen as best I can so my camera's not in the way. So as, as, as we can see, you know, we have a swing low, um, a swing high of that move. We, we then have the high of the move and the swing low of the high. So, so we, we kind of have the uh, initial bounding boxes, if you are, or the initial uh, containment zones or, or, you know, however you want to refer to them as. So that's how I would start this chart. Then I'd go to the weekly and, uh, you know, I'd break this down even further. And uh, let's change my color to my weekly color, which is purple. So I'm going to look at this, uh, you know, it comes down. I have a monthly level defined there. That's fine. Uh, swing high here let's let's mark the swing high at the low candle and uh, you notice right away that's actually the monthly level and and that's probably why that monthly level was created so we can actually take this away but just to drive this point home uh you know if, if we were here in the move right if, if we were right here in the move uh it's being a little funny let me reload this chart trading these being a little funny for me right now i wonder if this will work now Let's go to the weekly. And let's remark that level out right here. Okay, now let's, hopefully this replay tool will work. Yeah, there we go. Um, and we need to change this to purple because that was our weekly level. So so if we were marking this out, uh, you know, we were, we're on the weekly chart here and we can kind of see uh, this weekly develops a swing low right there. Um, you know, we, we know that this is a level for the future. So as we come up here, uh, I'm not sure why it's running through this on the daily, but that's okay, it can run through on the daily, that's fine. Uh, you, you can see we touch up here and we create our swing high, and then we're obviously gonna come down and respect that level right there. So you can see right there as, as we go through the chart, uh, that's, that's the level that was respected. Um, just kind of click out a few times, and that, that's enough for this, we don't need this anymore. Uh, so, so you could see, you know, in the moment why that would have happened and that that would be the level that would have been respected. Anyways, we can delete that because it's, it's not important because we have a stronger level, which is our monthly level. Go through this move uh, with weekly levels. Uh, okay, so we have the swing high, swing low. This is a test of that monthly. We don't need that. This is not a level here because this is the, uh, the, the this is not, you know, it might look like a level, but it's not. That's not a level. Let's go. Swing low is just testing this. Uh, swing high is testing this here. Now, this, no, that wouldn't be a level either. Uh, so really, we don't have any weekly levels because they're all they're all uh, respecting the confines of this uh, monthly chart, actually. So we actually don't have any weekly levels. And I just want to make sure that we do have one swing low here. So we are going to add that. Let's use a magnet tool, get, get exact. Uh, the swing high of this move isn't a level either. And okay, we have one swing high weekly here. So let's let's mark out these two levels. So so those are two levels right there. That's it. We we actually don't have any other weekly levels. So you can see that even just marking out the initial uh, monthly levels it showed us exactly where this move was kind of going. Now let's swap over to the daily, right? And part of this is just you know identifying all these levels. And uh, let's swap over to the daily. Okay, hey, let's uh, take our level, to our our, um, our tool here, and uh, start marking out some some daily levels. Uh, we have a swing low here, right? High of this swing low. Uh, that's not going to mark out a new level. That that swing high there is not going to be a new level. Through, you can see a test right there. It's going to swing low right here. Oops, magnet tool is being funny. And uh, actually, this this daily level creates our monthly level in the future, as you can see. So we don't we don't need this either because this one and this one are, are basically creating that monthly level in the future. So we've already identified that monthly. Now, if we were back in time back here, right? So say if we drag this out and we were back here, we would identify those, right? Like this would be the level, um, et cetera, et cetera. We'd be identifying those in the moment. But the second we identify that that monthly, there, there's no need for anything else. And, uh, and then same with right here, right? That, that's just the future monthly level. So these daily levels would have defined the future monthly level. But we don't need those because we can see we already have them marked out at a larger time frame. Okay, coming through this move here. Um, everything is marked out within these monthlies. We don't, we don't even really need to mark out anything else. Uh, MDA ends up being one of these coins that uh, it, it already has levels basically marked out from the, from the monthly. 
doesn't even really need anything else. Let's just make sure, let's go through this. Okay, we come up, we come down, it's not a level, it's not a level. Coming down, <clears throat> we've already marked out this uh, weekly here, it's not a level, this is where that weekly starts. There, there's nothing in here that's dictating levels. Uh, you know, we're just bouncing between these two zones. And that brings us up to the current. So, what would I be doing in this move right now? And, and how would I analyze this? Basically, just after, after looking at levels and uh, seeing what's happening with this uh, move, what would I do? Okay, first thing I would do is I would uh, look at the trends. So I, I would be taking the beginning of this uh, move up, so the bottom of that move up, uh, up to the swing high. And actually, we're gonna use the uh, swing high of the move because if we were to break this down, right now we're on the daily, but at some point this would break down into being uh, the very top of the swing high. So whether it's on an hourly chart, a four hour, or even a 15 minute chart, somewhere in one of those charts, this would be the swing high and this would be the swing low of the move, right? So I'm going to start analyzing what this has done. Um, I would have seen this swing low first and I would have, let's turn the magnet tool off. I would have identified that swing low, right? Like that and that swing high right there. And uh, that's as best as it, it's gonna let me get. And I would have seen that it broke the wedge and moved down. So I would have started to just uh, evolve this wedge out following this trend pattern here, looking for the next swing low, which ends up being right here. Uh, so uh, let's line that up a little better. You can call it like that, that's fine. Uh, you're not gonna get it to line up perfectly on, on trading view sometimes. You know, breaks down here, uh, keep pulling this wedge out. So I would be looking for the patterns that this is in a wedge, and this is it right here, right? So we can see that there is no real swing low this is, has seen yet. That, that, that to me looks like it still needs to see a swing low. Now, whether it's going to or not, I'm not sure, but that to me looks like it still needs to see a swing low uh, that this trend has to break. So I would probably just expand this out like this uh, just to the bottom to create a peak here. So what I would be doing is I would be expanding this wedge out to this point right here. Uh, this point right here, is, is where I would put that uh, kind of this. And, and instead of making a wedge, because we don't really have a swing low anymore, like, you know, right here we had a swing low, which was this, whoops, which was this. So we, we could define this wedge, right? Um, you know, going, going further, we kind of had a swing low here, um, right here, but now we don't really have a swing low. So what I would do is I would just then uh, define this as a uh, peak. Right, so that, that, that's the way I would be looking at this and I would be lining up these trend lines right here and, and looking to see, uh, waiting for this thing to break and, and waiting for some sideways movement outside of this valley to see what it's doing next. But because we haven't seen a swing low, I might expect it to test down to this monthly level. Now, what would I do in this trade? I know that we are riding a monthly level right now. So we've already defined that uh, we, are, we are looking at a monthly level right here. Whoops, oh, we don't want that tool. <laughs> uh, we already know we're looking at this silver monthly level and you can see we touched down once, we touched down twice. Looks like we're trying to move sideways, but I, you know, to me this looks like rejection. It looks like we've touched down on the monthly once. Uh, a second day we're touching down again. And if we swap this to the weekly, what would it look like, right? It just looks like it's still moving down and, and it still has uh, room to move before it's moving out of this trend sideways. So I am looking at this on the daily level and I am seeing it starting to develop this pattern of it's touched once, uh, it's gonna get rejected 90% of the time there. It's first touch, right? It's uh, establishing the first touch of this 90% uh, of the time it's being rejected. Now I'm looking at this uh, next day. Off this first touch, you should have some kind of first touch bounce, right? You should have some kind of first touch of the level and bounce up, just like right here when this kind of this this area right here, right? We first touch this level, we bounce up. It's not a big bounce, but it's a bounce. This is not this is within this is not a bounce. This is just kind of the, the continuation of that bleed, right? So we establish first touch here. Uh, we come up and then we break on first test, right? Because that's the way it works. You, you first touch and you're gonna reject 90% of the time and then you first test it and, on, and upon first test, that's the target, right? The, the objective of first test is to break the level. So, you know, first touch, first test break. So right now I, I can see we first touched, you know, 90% of the time I'm expecting some kind of bounce up. Um, we may still bounce up 
off this it may be a two-day pattern or, or a weekly pattern but I would fully expect to now be uh, looking to test out it here and uh, I need to kind of verify that because I have two levels in here so I have a weekly level and I have a, this monthly level so I kind of need to verify like what's my buy target on this where, where am I buying and why so that the first thing I'm doing here now is I've, I've identified what I think this coin is going to be doing and right I could be wrong this could move up and I could miss an opportunity so let's talk about that for a second if this is wrong and I miss the opportunity to buy, no love, no loss, because I never entered the coin. Profits not, not seen are, are just profits not seen. There's always another coin, always another trade, right? You can't always be perfect and you can't make every single perfect entry, every single perfect trade. The only thing you can do is assess the rules that you have made. And by rules, what I mean is that this chart, right? These are my rules. This is an art. This is a very creative process. I have defined these rules. So these lines are my rules, okay? So I need to sit here and say, I've defined a set of rules. Now, now which rule am I going to uh, apply to my trade? For me, what I'm looking at right now, if, if, if I'm going based on my rules, I would want to enter on this down here, this touch down here. Now I have to, I have to, I have to make some kind of sense of that. I can't just pick an arbitrary level and, and just say, oh, I want to enter there. And, and just because it's a monthly, that's, sometimes it's not enough. I want some kind of confirmation. So I'm going to kind of go back in my chart here. And there's a swing high that gets created here. So there's a, there's a peak that gets created here. Okay, so I kind of have two confirmations now. I, I have this peak swing high here on the daily. So in this move here, as we zoom out, I have this peak swing high here. So in this move, you know, in this in this uh, move that started down here and moved all the way up over two or three weeks or whatever this is, I have a swing high in this peak here. That swing high is lining up with my monthly. So if I were to look at this target from here, the level would be right here is what I'm targeting on this move. So for that reason, because there's something so apparent on my chart right in the immediate past, because of this, it's, it's very apparent, right? Like th this, is, this is the direct move up right before. Because of this, I would be looking at a target of this area in here. That's where I would be entering this coin. Now, I don't know how this is gonna play out. And this is kind of the fun, right? This is the fun of doing these live uh, trades because then you guys can see how this unfolds in the future. And I could, like I said, I could be wrong. But you don't lose money when you're wrong by not entering a trade. If I'm saying I'm entering here and all of a sudden Moeda starts doing this thing, hey, it might moon. Who knows? I don't know. Um, I have a pretty good idea. I, I don't think it's we're going to see this. But if I don't enter this, no love, no loss, I can move on to my next chart. And it's just like, okay, well, you are looking for good entries on coins, right? So I know that my target, based on my rules, I am looking at this right here as entry. I am looking at the swing high of this kind of last peak that was created. This last peak right here that's created, right? I'm looking at the swing high of that. And this is a daily peak, so I'm going to turn it red. Right? So this, this, is, this is kind of a daily move I've, I, I've identified. And is it a weekly move too? It is a weekly move too. So I'm actually going to identify this as purple. Because, it, again, going back to the uh, time frames uh, lesson, we want to identify these things based on the level of their strength, right? So if you can identify this on a weekly, it's, it's important information to know that if you're looking at a target and, you know, the, 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 the stronger the confirmations you have, the more likely it is that you're going to find support there. If this was a four hour peak, like, OK, well, whatever, doesn't matter. But, you know, four hour peak, maybe something like this right here, this little tiny pattern right here, that that's not going to that's not what I'm targeting. This is this is a peak that was created over how many weeks. Right. So in this trade, I have set my rules. I have looked at this thing. I have charted it. I am looking for entry down in here. Now, what am I going to do next? I'm going to set a notification. So what am I going to expect to happen if I expect entry? I want to first off, I don't want to enter on uh, Right on, right on my monthly level at, 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 at 13,791 because it could only touch the top of this peak, which is 14,109, or people could stop it out 100 sats up. So for me, what I want to do is, um, oops, oops, here we go. I want to create a notification. So on trading view, I'm going to go into this uh, clock here and I'm going to hit uh, set new alert, right? MD is a coin um, when it crosses. Right. So when it goes to a value and I'm going to set the value, so I'm going to say 14,200. Oh, I'm going to say actually I'm going to say 15,000, but my buy intent is 14,200. Right. 
So I'm going to say 15,000 um, only once, and I'm going to put uh, open-ended. So I want to know when this target gets hit. I don't want to have an expiration date on it. If I don't click this open-ended, what's going to happen is it's going to just expire based on the, the default date it sets. And I think it's, uh, what is that, 20, 48 hours it's setting. So it's setting a 48 hour clock by the looks of it, or, or 20, sorry, right, right there, 23 hours and uh, 27 seconds. So it's, it's setting a clock. So I just wanna go to open end because I just want it to, you know, it could sit in this range for five or six days, but I wanna set this notification so that when it does go there, I can, I can enter my trade, right? And it's gonna show pop up and, you know, play a sound and, you know, however you want that message delivered to you. I, you know, I click send SMS because I, I like it to my cell phone and, uh, you know, MDA crossing 1500 and I'm gonna hit create. So now when MDA crosses this zone here that you can see these orange marks, it's gonna notify me because I wanna be aware that it's, it's crossing this level. And what I would do then uh, is I would set my stop loss regardless. So, so here, right, I wanna see what's happening and when it, when it gets to this point, I'm gonna set my buy. Now what I'm gonna do for my buy uh, is I am going to do it like this. I'm gonna set a stop limit, okay? Oh, come on, there we go. I'm gonna set a stop limit, right? A stop order. So I want to, uh, when this coin crosses 14,200 and, let's say 210 sats, right? So what is this? It's 0. 0.0. 00014210 and there's this is a very good tip so this is something that is uh, very valuable for you guys and I'll probably talk about this a few times and this is a very good tip if, if I want the price to be triggered price triggers at 14,210 uh, I want to purchase at I'm gonna copy paste this for uh, a little bit of quickness I want to purchase at 14 uh, 209. Now, the reason I do this and don't do a book buy is because, uh, let's put this up here and let's put this here. Let's get some, a little bit of spacing here and uh, let's increase the font size. The reason I'm doing this is because if someone decides to sell uh, 50 Bitcoin at 14,200, What's gonna happen, right? If someone's dumping into this level, what's gonna happen is I'm not gonna buy at 14,210. My purchase is actually gonna be averaged down. So my purchase is actually gonna be, if they enter 13,800, I will be buying that at 13,800 or whatever it ends up averaging down at. I am not buying at 14,209. I am buying based on their average down. So it's a way, right? And this is a very valuable tip for you guys. This is a way that you can buy a coin cheaper without having your order on the book. You can buy a coin cheaper than actually having uh, the purchase price on the book and, and, and clicking, clicking commit to buy, right? In one way, you're catching a falling knife because price is moving down into, it's smashing down. But that's why we set a notification because this thing could dump down 600 sat, or 6,000 sats, right? Like you guys have seen it, it could go all the way down to 12,000 and you obviously bought way too high. So we wanna have a notification saying at 15,000, alert us that this trade is uh, at that price so that I can uh, analyze this. And if I see that it just looks like it's gonna test this level, uh, I wanna buy at the best price. So I'm, I'm setting my target, whatever my target is, I'm setting it and uh, I'm averaging down my purchase because someone's gonna sell a large amount and your order's not gonna be on the book. So if someone's sitting at 14,200 with one Bitcoin and they decide to sell 10 Bitcoin uh, down all the way to 14,000, you may pick up you know, whatever your order size is for 14,200 sats less or, or whatever it may be. But it's, I've, I've had, I've, I've, I've seen orders that I get 20% less the cost based on what it's been because somebody sell, puts, puts up some crazy order where they're, you know, if my buy was at 14,209 and I usually make them a little tighter. Like for, for myself, I usually do this because I, I go to psychological levels where I know people are gonna uh, dump like crazy and I'll go 1403, buy at uh, 1402, something like that. I'll, I'll get closer to psychological levels so that, you know, as it's preaching that, for, uh, as it's approaching that 14,200 level, um, you know, someone might smash down a thousand sats and, and I'll buy down where they where they put it down, right? So very good tip. I've, I've actually purchased, 
Uh, I've, I've had purchases on coins that were at a thousand sats and I've purchased them down as, as cheap as 700 sats uh, in, in, a, in a flash dump in uh, something that looks like this where you know somebody sells here and your order may be here at 26,000 but then you end up getting it at 23 because it was just some some cowboy who did a, a flash move right it's some you know rock star who's just yeah let's dump the market but then people reject price right so that's that's part of the art part of the uh, science behind it is is finding those levels the identifying the correct levels as a science and then part of the art is you know taking advantage of situations like that so that's how i would set up this trade uh, and, and that's where I'd be uh, looking to take an entry on a Moeda and I would be looking to stop out somewhere. Um, well, let's talk about that for a second. So I would look to buy, let's call it 14,100. Let's say I buy at the level. Let's say I identify this perfectly and I bought at 14,100. I'm probably selling out uh, a couple percent below my entry based on your own assessment. You, you, you guys have to make your, your own assessment based on your comfort levels and your risk tolerance and things like that. Um, if I'm buying at 14,100, I might want to stop out at 13,000. Well, it's got to be under 13,791. And uh, I, I would say probably uh, a little bit below that. So maybe 13,695 is where I would stop out. So, so what is that? Uh, 400 sats? 400 sats on a 14,000 coin? Uh, what is that? Oh God, it's late. My brain hurts. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So let's say roughly 400 sats, uh, 1400 would be 10%, uh, 140 would be 1%. Uh, so that's 280, uh, that's 380, 420. Yeah. Roughly three and a half percent under that. That's pretty risky. Um, with that said, I may set my, my buy target here. I may see what happens and, and wait for this coin to, uh, touch here and move sideways so I could take a little bit of a more aggressive stance on this level and uh, maybe stop out, you know, 2% under 13,000. Uh, so, so 300 points under 13,000, uh, 790. So maybe seven, seven, 13,500 to make it, um, not, not quite 2%. So that, that's the way I would look at it, right? I would, I would see what the coin's doing at 15,000 sats and I've had, I have my level set and, then if I get stopped out into and uh, I end up getting this for 13,500 or something, then I have a really good uh, risk tolerance because then I can stop out at 13,400, right? And, and it's only 100 sats and I, and I know I'm ahead of the curve. So kind of a, a, a bit of an insider's tip to the market or kind of, you know, something that uh, you see at a professional level, you know, these stop out orders and how to properly manage them. You guys will practice that and get experience with it and uh, hopefully get really good and catch these crazy orders because I've had a few where I've, you know, well, I've, I've had more than a few. I've had, I've had very, I've had a, quite a few where I've, I've bought a coin twenty or thirty or forty percent below what was meant to be sold, the intent that was uh, meant to be sold. You know, things like this down here, where it happens in one minute, or this down here, or this here, or some level, some level in here that only it's, it's only happening for, you know, a, a course of you know one hundred and twenty seconds, two minutes, or, or three or four minutes, or you know whatnot. So uh, that's a little tip on how you catch those uh, big spike orders down. It's all in stop orders and, 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 you know, practice to get used to it. And that's how I'd look at this coin. And that's the, the trade I would take. And uh, I'm not going to panic, you know, to, to, to go over this again. If this coin all of a sudden starts to move up, I'm not, I don't care. Like, I don't care. On to the next one. I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I didn't miss an opportunity. I didn't make a mistake. I didn't, uh, you know, enter the position incorrectly. I didn't, I didn't do any of those things right? I've assessed this coin based on my rule set. And I've said, this is my target. And if, if I buy there, great. If not, I, I don't. And I cleared off my alerts for this video, but typically I'll have about 30 to 40 alerts uh, on my chart. So as I miss this one, another one's popping up within half an hour. So I, you know, some, you know, I, I go through these assessment periods of, of five to 10 coins a day where they've hit targets. And I, and I look at these targets and, and, you know, if, if I have 10 coins that have hit a target that day, and I'm saying I've identified this as a purchase, right? I've identified this as a coin that I want to enter based on this level being hit because we just crossed that. And I, you know, we're now we're at a buy zone. If I've got 10 of these a day, I can pick the best three or best four or best five a day. And I can just take those positions and then continuously do that. I don't, it doesn't matter to me if this one coin moves up. I don't, it doesn't matter. I can just on to the next one, right? And I can take rock star positions all day long and, you know, you don't have to stress it, but your, your rules have to be bang on, right? That's the thing. That's the art of this. That's, that's the science and the art is that you create the rule set, right? You create these, uh, 
these these bounds that this this lives by and, and you're the one who uh, makes that creative uh, approach and take or sorry takes that creative approach and makes that process and designs this chart nobody else designs this chart right it's up to you so that's um, how I would take this live trade and then where would I exit uh, you know I, I would assess that at the time uh, I would just be looking at you know levels and, uh, and I won't get into where I'm gonna exit because that'll drag this video on way too long I think uh, for a final video where I where, where would I exit we'll get into you know stuff like that and other live trades or I plan to do quite a few live trades uh, over the course of, of this material and uh, yeah so I think we're gonna leave it at that um, if I had to give you guys a live exit right now I don't know what is this buying at 13,000 sell at 18 don't don't be greedy sell at the weekly heck if you buy at 13.9 and you sell at 16 uh, you know that's 2300 sats or 2209 sats uh, or sorry 2209 2000 sats on, on a 13,000 sat entry is 15% uh, or something like that quick math 15% that's a heck of an entry that's a that's a heck of a trade when I have five other trades going on that day if I can get 15% on that one coin over three days and you know this is all it took me to do it I'm happy 15% <laughs> is 15% that's you know very nice all right, so let's go over our list one last time here. Uh, live trade time, and uh, we just finished that. And beginner's course complete. So we made it through the course, guys. Uh, beginner's course part 10, live trade part one. Uh, this was the, the complete beginner's course and uh, you know uh, advanced courses to come next. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, please do so. Uh, support what I do. Uh, if you want to donate and uh, financially support what I do, you're welcome to. Uh, the details are in the donations or the donations details are in the description of the video and uh, trading view twitter check all that stuff out follow it uh, and if you guys have any feedback about the course what you what you guys thought of the course i'd love to hear your your feedback on how this has been for you uh, you know tell me if it's, it's if it's helped if it hasn't helped if it's uh, crafted you to be a better trader uh, you know w w what were your favorite parts like interact with me give me that engagement and, and you know i'll give it right back to you and uh, let your voice be heard because i, I take all the criticism i've had people I've, I've had comments say maybe change the chart in this way and, and you know implement that replay feature more often so I, I start doing that now right so if you guys have any uh any feedback at all please tell me uh, you know it's it's much appreciated and uh yeah i think that's it guys beginner's course part 10 uh advanced course will be next mental analysis following that uh Potentially the professional uh, course. I haven't decided if, if, if that's something I'm going to get into yet I have to see if there's enough material there and uh, the viability of it uh, As well as what are your opinions on, on a live stream or morning uploads? Is that something you guys would be interested in? Do you want to see my trades on a day-to-day -day basis so you guys can follow in a live stream or, or, or would you guys like uh, maybe a Every couple days I do uploads of the positions I'm taking or, or kind of where, where do you guys want to see this channel go? What does the community want? What do you guys want from this? Where do you, where do you see this thing going? Do you, want, do you want to just be here for a course and that's it? Or do you want this to continue growing and, and you want to see me uh, streaming every day and have that, that level of interactivity? Okay. All right, guys. Uh, that's it. Take care. See you on the next one.